Patients are generally admitted to hospital either on the day of surgery or the day before their operation. We take them down to the operating theatre and we prepare them for their procedure. Their hair needs to be shaved, their scalp is cleaned and we put some local anaesthetic in to allow us to fit the frame without too much discomfort. We also give the patient some sedation during that process and we do a CT scan. The aim of the CT scan is to allow us to perform an accurate operation and we combine the CT scan with their MRI scan in order to do that. We take them back to the operating theatre, make sure that they're relatively comfortable on the operating table. In some cases we put a urinary catheter in if we feel that they're going to want to empty their bladder during the procedure. The operation then starts after we clean their scalp a little more and put some more local anaesthetic in. I make an incision, I make two holes if we're doing both sides or one hole if we're just doing one side of the brain. We use very specialised pieces of equipment to allow us to record signals from the brain and to stimulate the brain as we're passing a fine wire down to the proposed target. We can often spend an hour or even several hours getting this right, making sure that we know exactly where we are and we know where the best spot is to put the electrode. Once we're confident that we're in a good spot, I put the electrode in and I secure that to the scalp. What happens after that depends upon the um, length of time that it's taken and depends upon a number of other factors but in some cases we would pop the patient off to sleep and do the second stage of the procedure which involves putting in extension leads from the head to the chest and connecting those extension leads up to the battery or implantable pulse generator. Sometimes we do that on the same day of surgery, other times we bring them back a week or two later and do it as a separate procedure. During the surgery Patients are awake in most cases. Very occasionally if the patients aren't able to stay still or their movement disorder is so severe, we might give them some sedation and occasionally we might give them a general anaesthetic. Having the patients awake and cooperative is really important uh, in terms of allowing us to get the electrode in the right spot. There are, there are a number of other people in the operating theatre. This is a, a team effort. We work with a neurologist um, who is monitoring the patient down the other end of the table, who's examining the patient fairly continuously throughout the operation and who's interpreting the signals that we're getting from the brain recordings. Once we've seen what those signals are and once we've seen what happens when we stimulate through the wire, we generally make a joint decision about where we're going to put the electrode and um, sometimes that decision may come about after looking at several different areas in the brain. When we're stimulating the brain, we're looking for a couple of different things. One thing that we're looking for is to see whether or not passing that electrical current is improving their tremor, is making them feel looser, is giving them more control over that part of their body. That's very important because that's our objective. But equally as important, what we're looking for is side effects. There's no point us putting an electrode in a spot if it's giving them a great result in terms of their tremor if they aren't able to speak or if they are experiencing so much numbness or tingling in their arm that that's going to uh, aggravate them uh, when the stimulation is turned on. So what we want to do is find a place in the brain that gives them a fantastic benefit but we also want to make sure that we're not producing intolerable side effects.